there is another powerful key that we've been dealing with. And that one says that if you lose everything that motivates you, that keep you happy, that inspires you, if you lose them, you've lost everything. You have lost everything. And you have asked me, how? Because you can have professional training. You can have degrees, academic degrees. You can spend years to obtain credentials. But if, if the inspiration, the power, the fire, the original instinct that drove you into that kind of creativity, production, or services, if that dies inside you, what is another name for drive? Nancy, help us here. What's another name for drive? Drive, drive, drive. What's another name for drive? If what drives you dies, you are dead. That's another way of looking at it. If the things that drives you dies, then you are dead. If what drives you dies, then you've lost everything. You don't, you don't have anything to live for on earth. That's why I say to most of you who have children and who have grandchildren, if out of 100% of your life, that is 90% of what keeps you going, then focus on that. If it, is, if it is giving service to your parents, your elderly parent is what inspires you, then stay with it. If that's your drive, if that's what motivates you, then do it. Even you can take this to the marketplace, you can take this to the God place, into religion, or into business. That's what I mean by the God place and the marketplace. If whatever drives you, if you lose it, then you've lost everything. Because let me tell you why depression comes to people. When, when you have that feeling of failure, that's why failure is a bad thing. Failure is a bad thing. Opening yourself to bad experiences, like go, go for drugs, become an alcoholic, become a gambler, you keep investing yourself into the ways of, you become a judgmental spirit, a critical person, a judgmental person. Nothing happens of its own. For example, things happen. 
And there are people who do not want to accept that things happen until they face the hurricane. Then let me know. People who, when bad things happen to them, they must find somebody to point at. When hurricane come through your city and tear everything down and you on the run, let me see where you are going to find hurricane when the hurricane has passed, where you are going to find hurricane and go to the home of hurricane, send hurricane an email, take hurricane to court and go and fight hurricane because nothing is allowed just to be. You are a good fighter. <laughs> You love to fight. That makes you. That's your inspiration. Have you ever seen people go to fight hurricane? Or thunder and lightning and take them to court? Or flood? Or tsunami? Have you seen people do that? No. No. Okay, people who have critical, judgmental anger, how do they deal with such a thing when it comes through their territory and tear everything they have down? They become depressed. Many of them give up in life. Throughout their life, they never recover. Or if they are if they are professional manipulators, dubious people, and they met somebody who is a worse devil than they are, they become depressed. <laughs> Like many people do not know about my leadership style. They don't know it. They don't. Because I will show you the greatest of love and caring and kindness as a pastor. But there is the other side of me, which is the prophetic, the office of a prophet. And then there is the other side of me, which is a strict, very strict businessman, very, very strict, that will not tolerate mediocrity and will not tolerate disloyalty. And that's why if I'm kind to you and you think that that is a weakness, my, my kindness and my caring is a weakness, then I show you the tough businessman. Because when it comes to leadership, I'm a ruler. And there are things that when we decide, everyone falls in line. You get out of line, you are, you are out. Because it's strictly like the military. You know your place. And you know your function. And there are boundaries you cannot cross. What is it that inspires you? For example, if I walk into a place, I walk into a store, I look at the way they build it, the way they arrange things. I smell an incense or a perfume, smell very luxurious. Mmm, that's good. I walked into, is it a Mercy or the large store in Chicago, in downtown Chicago? And I saw ladies dressed like mammoths, men dressed like English men with those tail like suits. And they were pouring champagne to customers. So while you are shopping you are sipping a glass of champagne there is strawberry and um, chocolate there is some meats there i mean they have a lot of nice gourmet food all over so you can pick what you want in a plate and eat and then get whether champagne or white wine or red wine and they are engaging you in business. 
and the place smell so luxuriously entertaining, very nice, very seductive in a good way. And everyone there who are serving are telling you of the new perfume that came out last month, just today, last week. They are telling you the new pants, the new jeans, the new socks. If you are a female, they take you aside and they are talking to you about the new wears, different, different stuff, the new shoes, the, the new bags, the new cooking utensils. I mean, it's just amazing. And people are just buying things, buying things, buying things. Because you walk in there, there is something that will motivate you, that strikes you. This is a beautiful place. The people are nice. They know business. They know how to get it. I walk into a store, I smell an incense, especially an Indian incense. There are some of them that are just so sweet. A candle. There is something that light does to my mind and to my spirit. There's something that light does to me. So some of the things that some of you are that spirit to, I don't. There are things that inspires and motivates me and beckons me to be me and to do good. And to create more things. <laughs> Many of us, because we are we are we are rushing for life, rushing to be this, rushing to be that, that's why we don't have anything. Because we've lost everything that used to, that was our drive for life. Maybe because your dad or your mom, they died young. That's the reason that you swore that at any time you pick a picture of your father or a picture of your mother, you remember what they did not finish or what they didn't have. And that you'll make sure you'll have it in their name and in your name. Maybe they didn't buy a house, build one. You swear I'm going to do it to clean the shame from my father's face or from my mother's face. Nobody went to college in the family. I'm going and I'm staying until I get the four-year degree in my hand, I'm not leaving. Why? Because your family is being ridiculed and mocked as poor people. What is it that what is it that become the strongest inspiration for you? What is it? Inspiration and motivation is not trying to go and buy a, 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 a what is it? Going to buy a $50,000 car that you are going to pay for the next 10 years when your job you don't even make up to $15 an hour. You don't think of it. Because you think that when you drive that car, that you have inspiration. That's not the kind of inspiration we are talking about. And at the end of the day, they come and take the car back. Or the house goes in for foreclosure. That's not being wise. You don't know how to sit down and calculate things. We are talking about what is it that 
the little things you see, the things you do, the things you put in place that make you want to do more good things. You want to stay on your job and your career and develop it. You want to you wanna stay on your business until it becomes great forever. Until your name entered into the annal of history. That's what we are talking about. So people have different things that inspires them, motivates them. What is it? For some people, is once a week they go and play soccer, or they go to the or go, they go to the gym. There must be something that you hold on to. We are not talking about smoking a cigarette or cigar, or drinking beer, or doing drugs, and you think that's your inspiration. That's not what we are talking about here. We are talking about like what is the music that when you hear it. It makes you want to do great things. For example, do you guys know, let me throw a question open here. Please, you cannot mute your phone and answer me. Whose music? I'm not asking you to look at the internet now to give me an answer because I will know if you look. Whose music? Okay, let me put it this way so that you, so that you don't go to the internet to look for it. Where did Adolf Hitler you know that Adolf Hitler was from Austria. Where did he walk into that changed his life forever? That changed his life forever. Where did he walk into? Can anyone tell me? Anyone on the line? I know Mozart comes from Austria. Maybe Mozart. I'm not talking about Mozart. Okay, Nancy, what has Mozart got to do with Adolf Hitler? Tell us. No, I thought you said what kind of music. So I thought maybe he heard Mozart. Oh. I said, where did Adolf Hitler go to that changed his life forever? Remember that Adolf Hitler came from, was born in Austria. He wasn't born in Germany. He was born in Austria. I hope you know that. Where did he walk into? And that changed his life forever. That became his strongest inspiration. Okay, let me answer. He walked into an opera house. Opera. No, it wasn't Mozart. He had Wagner. He had the music of Wagner. And also the daughter of Wagner was there. The great composer. And that changed his life forever. And from time to time, when he is down, he go and put the music of Wagner and listen. Or he goes to the opera house. Because when he became the chancellor of Germany, the first place he went to was back to that opera house. And officially, Wagner's daughter was able to, to meet with him face to face. Because it was the music of that girl's father that kept him going. Music. One composer. What powerful music has taken over your life? Many of you don't listen to classical music. I have a lot of classical collection here. From Wagner to Beethoven to Tchaikovsky to Brahms to Mendelssohn. to back to Mozart, 
Those are music that nobody want to listen to anymore. Black people tells you, a lot of black people in America, they tells you that classical music is music for mad people. That they use it to calm mad people down. <laughs> because they might have heard. Yeah, that's what, that's what black people tells you. Because an African-American man walked into my office and heard me listening to, I think that was Beethoven's music. It's one of his concertos. And he's like, you? You are listening to white man's music? That's music for crazy people. That's crazy people music. That's what we call it. I say, really? He said, yes. So that's what inspires me. He said, I can't believe it. I thought you should be listening to the Commodores or Cool and the Gang. I say, well, I have my own little gods who sings for me. They are not Shalamas or Commodores or Cool and the Gangs. Mine, they come from different, they come from all the races of the world. I pick one of the album that was near me. I say, have you ever listened to the music of Julio Iglesias from Spain? He said, no, he has never heard of him. I say, have you ever listened to the music of Frank Sinatra? He said, no. I said, have you listened to the music of Body Guy and BB King and Muddy Water? He said, yes. I said, okay, we are cool. <laughs> <laughs> you ask a lot of ask a lot of people of African ancestry, they have lost touch with music of people like uh, uh, is it Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Fitzgerald and of that generation of that generation they have lost their music including wonderful music by Diana Ross I have music of Diana Ross when he was a young girl Talk less of music from other cultures, like Cuban music. My maintenance manager came to come and fix things in my house, and he's from Cuba. We say Cuba. There they pronounce it as Cuba. He's from Cuba. He walked in. I turned to Alexa, and I said, Alexa, please, can you play me some Cuban music? And Alexa began to play. I went and... Uh, I have a Cuban rum in my house. So go and tell everybody else if you've heard it. Barbara, where are you? Barbara will still love me anyway. And Nancy. And Diane and Lucky. I have Cuban rum here. At one point, somebody sent me some Cuban cigars. I use it to play politics. You vote for me, I give you one of it. I don't smoke but I use it to play politics. <laughs> yep. Remember what Tate Kennedy used to do of Massachusetts? The great Democrat uh, senator. You know what he used to do? He used to carry in his briefcase Cuban cigar. Yeah, to the Senate. And he will tell the Democrats and the, and, the, and the Republicans who will go his route. He will, he will put the cigars on the table and they will be looking at them. He knows that they all smoke. And those are the finest in the world. We use money to play power if you don't know it. We use luxury, luxury cigars, luxury rum. We use food. Those things you think are nothing. That's what the rich use to play politics. Ted Kennedy would push the cigar towards, towards them. And he said, don't touch it until we finish. <laughs> and everybody, I agreed, I agreed. And then he gave to each person and liked it for them. That guy was funny. Have you seen have you seen the video 
I was watching when they buried the late great senator from Arizona, John McCain. Peace be upon that man. Did you see what Bush Jr. was doing to Michelle? While they were reading all the things they are reading, the service is on. It, I mean, he gave her, he slipped a candy and a bubble gum to her, to Michelle. And Obama turned around and looked and smiled. <laughs> I love that man. I love George Bush Jr. I love that guy. That's why, that's why many a time, many of you get yourself angry. I used to do that. I don't do that no more. I told God that I don't want those kind of prophetic life anymore. Give it to other people. Let them do it. The reason is because politicians will make you to get angry over nothing. And those things, many of them, is just a game. At the end of that quarrel, they go to eat and drink and award each other contracts. You saw today for the first time, maybe many of you for the first time are hearing that Joe Biden, the former vice prince, uh, president, the son has was working for some, some, some corporation in Ukraine. Was having dealings with the Ukrainians. So at the end of the day, you say to yourself, bloody hell, what is going on here? Democrats had dealings with Russians and with Ukrainians. Republicans have dealings with Russians and Ukrainians. And, and Democrats and the, the Republicans uh, are having dealings with Saudi Arabia, with China. With, because at the end of the day, you realize that those guys are there giving businesses to each other and to each other's children and family members. And you are here fighting for white people and for black people. If I tell you what Hitler says about leadership, you'll be very angry at yourself. And I refuse to say it in public. <laughs> I've spent time to learn the lives of great people and what motivates them, what drives them. If you lose what drives you, you've lost everything. It might just be a little thing. We may not know that what is keeping Trump alive from every problem he has had in his lifetime. Bankruptcy, divorce, all kind of problems. How did he escape from all this? Not that he escaped from it. How did he keep going on as a human being? His, his desire to have a business and to keep the legacy of his father, the Trump name, is far more superior than anything. That drives him. And I like him for that. Every one of you can blame George Jr., George Bush Jr. for taking us into war. I don't care. Because I think those who needed war, they got war. And they will never mess with us again. I saw Jimmy Swaggart's son trying to pull down some men that I like. I might not like everything about them, but they are great men. I saw Jimmy Swaggart's son trying to slam Jesse Duplantis. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. Leave Jesse alone. Leave Jesse alone. He has no fault. And I will have videos that I talk about. There are people that I love. And I don't want nobody messing with them. Because they've paid a price to be where they are. My job on earth is to make a millionaire or a billionaire 
out of who you are. Amen. We might not be there yet, but we are going there. Not just because I say so, God says so. Not just because God and I say so, but because you and I, we are ready to work for it. We are ready to pay price for it. Go and see the price that Walmart has paid for them to be worth 170 something billion. And there are people who are going about the internet trying to talk bad things about Starbucks, about is it Pandora bread or whatever, about uh, uh, what is the other what is the other place, Mary? Cheesecake factory. Yeah, cheesecake factory. Uh -huh. That they are all Luciferians. They are all mermaid cult. They are all bad people. They are satanic. What has those things got to do with men and women who have worked hard to have those businesses going on? And then you try to use religion to tear them down. I will still walk into a Starbucks to get my coffee. I have a stepson, if you don't know it. He works with Cheesecake Factory, okay? All of you should know that. I have, I have my lovely girls. I'm not talking of my daughters, other people's daughters who work at Pandora Bread. I have managers who work for Starbucks. There's nothing wrong about those places, my dear. Those people who own those companies have found something that inspires them. And that is what is driving them. If anybody want to stop things that motivates you, that makes you stay in business, I was looking at history. Why didn't Hitler married? Why wasn't he married? Finally, I had my question answered. Every woman that he had affair with, he had relationship with, he made it known to them that he did not want marriage to interfere with the desire to be the chancellor of Germany and to conquer the whole world. He was truthful to them. And one of them stood by him throughout his lifetime. Have you found yet what makes you not to give up? If not, you will give up. One person, maybe, might be one person that you found is way of life. Maybe that might be me. The way I do things. Now, let me tell you the story of this guy from Cuba who is, a, is a, the maintenance manager. He walked into my, into my house to come and repair something. And I asked Alexa to play me some Cuban music, Alexa. Alexa, play me some Cuban music. And he started playing some Cuban music. I went and brought some Cuban rum. And I poured a glass for him. I poured a little bit for myself. And because he cannot speak English, but he had the translator on his phone. When he listened to, I think they were playing Buena Vista Social Club. Nancy, you remember them? Um, those elderly men who came to New York and rocked the world with their music. Most of them were in their 80s and 90s. They were still drinking. They were still smoking. And they had great voices. It's not that because people smoke and drink and they live long, you want to go and try it. Don't. Like myself, I will not try those hard liquor. I mean, drink it like they do. I don't smoke. I've never, I don't know how smoking tastes like. I don't know how drugs look like. 
I don't know how gambling, what people do when they gamble, how they feel, why they're even gambling, I have no idea. So the man said to me, you have no idea that I feel so good. He said, I have no idea he feels so good when he drank the rum from his country and is listening to the music from his country. He started dancing. He told me, I feel so good. That's what the translation from his phone was telling me. <laughs> he fixed everything. I mean, the guy is a brilliant technician. Five minutes, what he came to repair was working perfectly. And he thanked me very much. And he left. See, that's what, those are the things that inspires them. They take life easy. Do not lose what inspires you. Some of the things that give you inspiration, you were born with it. Or you saw it in your family already. If you don't have, call me and we will talk about your type, your emotion, and I'll recommend things that will help to inspire you, to keep you motivated and put you on the driver's seat. And it will be a zoom, 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 zoom. Your gift will come out. Your talent will begin to bring you money. Good night. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Thank you.